majority of Singaporeans will have fond memories of Discos Park. I do remember uh, a big splash, the Gokis Chalets, when we were in secondary school. Gokis Chalets was very, very uh, famous. I myself was from St. Patrick's School, so we were very close to Discos Park. So anytime we need to do recreation, we just go there and uh, you know cycle, have barbecues, and of course, sometimes we also eat there. La. How was that? Um, East Coast Village Seafood Centre? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Madini Jadis, a senior architect from RSP Singapore. I'm really my role for this Park project is designing the whole Discuss Park for concept stage, all the way down to DT and Tenta. It's mostly regarding master planning and from the micro to the micro things as well, like the uh, detail design and all that. There were a lot of ad hoc establishments that was happening within each uh, particular area in East Coast Park, primarily where Victory Cove was. It was starting to be a lot built up and less about nature. We talked with MPARKS and we, we agreed that you know uh, we need really to refocus the activities and the vibes basically in East Coast Park to get back to nature. The main focus for this project was actually for us to give a healthier pulse rate across the whole of East Coast Park. The key principles that we think were the driving force behind this was actually the existing buildings and what are the sentiments and memories that are attached to it. Next one is of course the building community. How can they be involved and how can they be updated in the development process and primarily be happy with the outcome as well and how to ensure that whatever built environment that we do is respectful of the surroundings from the car park all the way up to the sea in terms of visual and in terms of the environment as well. And lastly, the building structures, what can we retain? How do we reduce the amount of new structures that we are going to introduce into the park? All these are factors that we, we looked into to ensure that East Coast Park is uh, still primarily a great park for the public to use. When we started all this project, right, it was from macro to micro. We went through the master planning with NPARKS. We already actually had areas uh, being zoned in alphabetical order. So, you know, we went through uh, trying to establish each area, uh, how do we enhance this uh, park and give it a healthier pulse rate. We were also designing uh, wayfinding for the park as well to make the aesthetics cohesive across the whole East Coast Park. From the eight zones, we, we had to colour code them and make sure that everything's quite readable, everything's quite easy to navigate. This helps to inform the public which nodes are in which zone. That's how we started to develop both pedestrian and the vehicular uh, wayfinding signages as well. And from there, then we started going the direction of let's build a urban design guide for the park as a base so that we can use it for future implementations. So those were the key uh, main things that we were looking at before we chose the three uh, nodes that the project is famous for. So the three areas that we chose for this project was actually the former Big Splash, the Gold Kiss Chalets, and of course, if you all remember the 24-hour Burger King uh, drive through that area. We went through a process uh, with the various groups of public during the concept stage. So for example, for Cyclist Park, right, uh, we talked to the uh, specific cyclist groups that were using the park and also the Marine Parade Residence Committee. Uh, from there, then we understood their needs, what they were looking forward to in the new park. So from there, you know, we developed the Cyclist Park into a uh, note of like training circuits and uh, food establishments as well. So that's how we ended up with the beginner circuit and the advanced circuit within that node. First of the growth was the former Big Splash and what MPAX wanted was actually to ensure that it's still a fun and uh, active area for the park goers. We will try to retain the existing structures so we retain that cylindrical form and then as we developed the vertical playground within it, we were mindful of uh, trying to get back the rainbow colours that it was associated with with the vertical playground. Uh, with the spiraling ramp around it. That's about two slides that we catered for as well, just to give a nod to the old slides that were once there. Around the coastal playground cylindrical tower, we had various other activities for the families as well, which includes the water playscape, the nature play garden, the sand pit, and even an event lawn for future uh, outdoor events. 
we really try to pump in as much activity as possible within the node so that the public have something to look forward to and uh, can see what East Coast Park can actually offer. So across all these active zones, right, we wanted a place where the park goers can actually sit down, relax and lounge. Poetry Cove was actually designed with uh, mostly uh, relaxation areas, those cute little seats and then garden swings as well. We designed it around the existing rain trees that were already there. There was a pavilion that we made it as a focal point for the node. And at this pavilion is where we decided that uh, we should have a feature rain tree that's actually yellow and not like the typical green that you see in East Coast Park. The main activities for East Coast Park and the park goers is basically cycling, camping, and of course barbecue. So we did try to enhance all these activities with our interventions and uh, trying to just ensure that the park has continued popularity and growth as well. We compared this project in 2021 and we were actually quite pleased with the outcome and how it has been uh, received by members of the public. We were so happy that uh, you know, through various publications and the receiving of a few awards, uh, East Coast Park has been recognised as uh, one of the key projects that help to connect people with nature. In terms of sustainability, in terms of respecting the environment, I feel that East Coast Park has uh, been quite successful. We are setting up a new group called the RSP SM Energy Group that actually focuses on all these sustainability ideas that, that is also in line with what the country is doing for the net zero carbon footprint. It's in the hopes that this group starts focusing more on how we can reduce the changes of the building landscape and also to ensure that you know, everything's about energy efficiency as well in the long run.